This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Um, you all ready for this? Mm -hmm. da -na -na this is a <laughs> sham. No. No. Nope. Just stop. Get real. <laughs> Welcome to DBL. Happy Monday. Hope you don't have a case of the Mondays. Uh -huh. Okay. Welcome to DBL. <laughs> uh, we do want to give a shout out. Southern California sure got a full dose of Mother Nature over the weekend. Tropical storm Hillary brought tons of rain and wind, causing flash floods in some areas as rivers overflowed. Now streets filled up and some were even washed out by the mudslides. Check out this aerial video showing Dodger Stadium completely surrounded by floodwaters. Wow. Now, in the midst of the uh, storm, this my friend was on the phone with me while this happened. A 5.1 magnitude earthquake hit northeast of Los Angeles in Ojai, causing some damage to stores like this. Yeah, I mean, this is one that I was kind of scared about. Me too. I heard about the rainfall, and then I was worried about, I didn't know about whether tsunamis or anything could be part of it, but obviously we have family there, my family's there, so I'm glad that it was not great, but it was mild, and I'm, you know, I'll take that 10 times out of 10. I agree with you, and we are hoping everyone out there is drying out. All that extreme weather can cause lots of anxiety, though, and that actually brings us to our next story, because more than 40 million of you suffer from some sort of anxiety disorder. And let's be honest, finding mental health support can be really hard and really expensive. So to help fill in the healthcare gaps, there are all these products out there, you know what I'm talking about, all marketed to help you deal. There seems to be a countless numbers of the supplements, you know, the gummies, the tinctures. They claim to like help alleviate the stress. You also have the scented oils, the diffusers, the sprays, the promise to create calming environments. There are also weighted blankets and plush toys to cling on to when it all just becomes too much. Some some folks, oh my, did you see that plushie? Yes. Is that a sloth? I think it was a sloth. Some folks even turn to adult coloring books to help cope. Clearly, anxiety is big business, and millions of us turn to these alternative options. But do they really help, and are they worth the billions of dollars that we spend? I will let you guys know that we spend about $375 per month on our mental health, according to the NIH. That is a 30% increase since 20. 20. Is alcohol factored into that? I don't think so. I think it's more um, soothing, uh, more like wellness. Well, I, the whole wellness industry. Mm. I think that's a really great question because I think that's how a lot of people cope. Is we were talking about drugs. this. Well, I have, yeah, I have yeah. actually something to say to that, Al, which is, I'm sorry to be speaking so much, but this is my no, Buddhist please. teacher. The whole idea in Buddhism is that you stay. You stay in the suffering. You don't try and get a weighted blanket. You don't run away. So she says most of addictions stem for this moment when we meet the edge and we can't stand it. And we have to soften it. We have to pad it with something and we become addicted to whatever it is that seems to ease the pain. And that's from Pema Chodron, a great Buddhist teacher. But that's what we do. We don't sit there and deal. We run away. But which doesn't that imply that at some point this pain will be alleviated? Mm. Or I you think, live with it. Or you live with the suffering. But what if, like, I don't know. That That's not a great sell to somebody. This is just forever. I think that's Buddhism. When, when you, <laughs> there, is there is a certain amount of privilege in saying, like, uh, I have anxiety about this thing coming up, but we have money to deal with it. Or, yeah, we'll go to your parents' place next year, but we'll fly to... Like, but what if you didn't have money to get somewhere? What if yeah. you didn't have money and somebody's going to lose their leg when they could probably just have a surgery? That kind of hurt, I think, in guilt stays forever. So when somebody tells you to just sit in the moment and not get a beer or not get a, uh, you know, marijuana... I don't know. I don't know if that's going to sell a lot with the masses. Yeah, I mean, this this that's really why it's hard. Yes. that's yeah, why it's no, very it's, hard. That's why people monks spend years and years. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. No, I I feel this a lot right now because um, I started my IVF journey like almost two months ago, yeah. and there are so many things that I just cannot do like uh, generally if I got um, you know if I were in a position where I was really stressed I could like get on the treadmill and like go at it for an hour or something or like go to the gym like there was a month where I that was completely taken away from me also like I couldn't have a drink right you know I couldn't right. do things that I would normally do so I had to get like really creative about being like well 
this is just the beginning of a very long journey. So what do I need to fix or understand within myself? See, that's where you because go. Because I don't changes. have a choice. Exactly. And then I think it's also like with the idea of like an IVF journey, I'm sure a parent mothers could definitely, this is the first time I'm thinking about it, but I'm sure moms are in this state of mind all the time. It's like now you're thinking about someone else who's more important than you. So for me, I think that it kind of made me um, kind of take a journey within myself about like, I will very much ignore myself and put someone else first. So this is giving me an opportunity to listen to you, to listen to it. Yeah. That's so interesting. We just got a factoid for you, Al. One in five Americans go to alcohol to deal with stress. So that's very much a part of what we don't want to be is the wellness, but it is a part of it. Jeff, what do you think about all this? Yeah, I, it is becoming to a point where I understand people are dealing with anxiety and people have social pressures and whatever else, but it's becoming an excuse, I think, for a lot of people, right? I don't want to do this task. It's the world's fault, and I have anxiety, and I need a mental day. Right. I think people are taking advantage of that. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, so everyone settle down on this Monday out there. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying, for me, what I do with my life or what I'll do with my family or my kids when my wife is feeling some sort of way, I'll tell her, maybe you're building this up too much. Like, we have a great life. We, we really live good. You know, let's focus on the positive things. Maybe fix what you can. Some things are out of your control and you can't fix them. For me, I turn to working out. I sit in my sauna. That's my stress relief. I don't think what the pharmaceutical industry is doing is just peddling these medicines and pills that you're never going to get off of. Where is it like, hey, we're going to give you this for six to eight and weeks, you... like my wife when she had postpartum, and then we're going to wean you off of that. Here's this medication. Now you're now it's no different than a drug dealer. I'm, here's some medication. Now you're on it for life. And that's how you're going to deal with your problems instead of looking in the mirror and saying, what can I fix to better help myself? Again, people don't want to hear that. Take your medicine. Do whatever you want to do. For me, I'd rather look myself in the mirror and face my own problems and try to deal with what's in my control rather than what's not. Yeah. So what about people preying on that, right? Like, so what about like... I pray too. No, I don't mean oh, pray. I'm oh, so sorry. I do I mean, pray. No, yeah, yeah, praying yeah. is an excellent because way of honestly for wellness. Right. Excellent way. I mean P-R-E-Y and I don't mean to bring up oh, I get you. Gwyneth Paltrow or whatever, but she's an example of those that sort of prey on the ang anxious among us and put out things that, by the way, none of these are FDA regulated. None of these are federally looked at. These are all just try it out, try it out, spend all your money. But, but see, I don't, please. No, I, I don't agree that Gwyneth Paltrow's of the world are preying on people. Okay, talk I think to me. That, I think that we have to be very clear about some things work for some of us that don't work for others. I mean, there's no rhyme or reason. You can't tell someone, oh, this thing that you do or this practice that you do relieves your anxiety. No, it doesn't. Like if someone's saying like, you know, I like to run outside naked and run around the parking lot three times and then my anxiety is gone for the next three days. Britney Spears is the next story. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's, I'm not Great laughing, for you. but I am. Great for you. And people are offering other opportunities to do that. Apparently, I'm doing this 80s thing where I lost one, one yeah. earring. Yes, uh, one, girl. One, oh, oh, that's what was going on. I, I was like, what's happening? I felt that the girl. was crawling. I, I will get your earring. I, I'll I didn't say this. It, yeah. I think that we are not like taught to be self-sufficient and look for ways that we naturally cure our own anxiety. Uh, Jeff, I remember famously when we were uh, auditioning for the show the first time and you were going fishing with your dad and I was like, this dude's going fishing? Like, how do you, aren't you nervous about this? You know, if we're gonna find out if we got this show, but th that's a tradition you have. It's something that relaxes you, going to the ballpark, go going for a walk. There's a lot of things that people used to do that were free that helped relieve anxiety. And Otis Redding, sitting by the dock of the bay. That was the way that you And what did you just say? And sitting. Just sit sometimes if you can just try, even for but two seconds. But there's no money sitting. in that. I agree and with that. Yeah, but I when he was sitting on the dock of the bay wasting time, they were also, like, partaking in bourbon. Let's be honest about that. And that's fair, too. We have to look at all angles. Uh, we don't know for that. Well, no, he could well have been I have plenty of people to reference, you so I have, a I have a bay. Maybe. Otis, <laughs> Otis, <laughs> we don't know. Coming up Maybe on DBL. No one calls on. All right. Should you report an incident when you are the victim of fraud? Why so many people are just surrendering to scams and our interview with comedian Tom Papa. He's telling us all about the ghost he thinks is in his house.
Okay, so this is. Oh no, I got it. Okay, so this is by Pema. In case you guys want to know, it says stay, stay, just stay. Whenever we wander off, we very gently, gently encourage ourselves to stay and settle down. Are we experiencing restlessness? Stay. Discursive mind? Stay. Aching knees, throbbing back? Stay. What's for lunch? Stay. What am I doing here? Stay. I can't stand this one more minute? Stay. And that is how you cultivate steadfastness. And that is Buddhism. And that is Pema. Now, is this the hardest thing in the whole wide world to do? Yes. Well, Should you try it with... Thing to very do. true. But could you try it with someone very who like gives you the most anxiety like, let's say your mom is the person who gives you the most. don't try staying when you think of your mom that's tr really hard try sitting and staying and i hear you that is a very privileged way of saying it explain to me what you mean by that well because most people don't have the privilege of having like a moment to stay in their anxiety most people are trying to live and figure out how they're going to pay the bills and have a roof over their head and take care of their children like I'm not saying it's a privilege to have anxiety. I think it's a privilege to have these conversations surrounding it because most people are in survival mode. You're talking like in thriving mode, which for me, I would acknowledge the reason why I can even have this conversation or change my practices is because I'm in a privileged position. But why can't we stay in survival mode? Why can't we practice that when you're in the hardest of the hard? Why is that only when because you're just anxious? What is the hardest of the hard, Tori? The hardest of the hard are people who are actually going from day to day trying to figure out how to physically survive. Most of us don't understand what the hardest of the hard is. Like, it would have been very difficult. Welcome back. How many times a day do you get scam emails, phone calls, or texts? Well, if you're like most of us, and it's a lot, it just seems to be getting worse. Well, a new survey found that a vast majority, 71% of Americans, think it's pointless to report crimes of fraud because they believe nothing would be done about it. So what do you think about this? Are we all just surrendering to the scammers? Jeff, I hate to go to you first, but I know you take these on strongly. Tell me what you do. I, just, I ignore it. I you have a spam it. thing on my phone, right. like you could turn it on. I just, when I get a number 71. that I don't know and they don't leave a message, it's blocked. So I hope someone's not trying to just contact me. Like, <laughs> I'm scared to leave a message because you're blocked <laughs> automatically. If I see an email that wants money from me, I used to be like, oh man, it's, I just delete it, spam, delete. What if you I, are scammed? Do you report How? it? You I, want money from me? You're going to have to come get it. Well, I, you know I, what I mean? I'm not going to respond to an email that looks a little fishy and get calls from numbers that aren't in the United States asking me for money. Mm. It's a little obvious now what they're doing. I understand some of them are high tech. Right, right, right. could easily be scammed, but I just shut it all off. If you want money, you come get it. Right. Well, I mean, I, I got scammed uh, th th recently. I think when you we, did. We, when we were in uh, the only re reason I noticed is because when I was sending my uh, sending my monthly uh, expense report out, like uh, have an app that does it for me, and I saw one of my credit cards was maxed out, and it was a credit card I it was like a credit card I use just to hold hotel reservations once you get there, and I was like, there's no way. I, and then I looked, and the first charge was like you know, Nairobi for you and like all the, the uh, you know, Nigerians in it. They had lit me up over the, the last three to four months. Yeah, but they, scam, they were though. taking small. They stole your credit card. That's not a scam, though. No, did well, they, they, you kept your credit card. They were taking little bits of right, money out. Were, yes. Did you report this? I did, but only to Capital One. Who so you didn't report this to the Sorry, police? Sorry, like a commercial. <laughs> no. What's when, in your when wallet, my, when though? My <laughs> home was, when my home was completely vandalized and everything that I own was taken from me, uh, I called the cops and they were like, this is a domestic situation. And I just, I always think, you know, uh, I was in a okay place in my life. I think about how many people were like, there were times most of yes. my life were like, I just wouldn't have had a bed. I would not have had chairs or silverware. That's right. So I just hope people understand that you have to be extra diligent because there's no help. I know you watch 48 Hours and Law and Order where the four beautiful cops go and arrest the bad guy. They don't exist. Yeah. 
it's you and there's nothing else. And to go into the world with that. Sorry it's to be so a bummer. I was gonna there's go, nothing. When, I, my, when my car got stolen, the cops didn't come. My catalytic converter twice got stolen. I'm like, eh, it's a lot of work. Yeah. Like, I just have no concept that they will ever do anything. Yeah. What yeah. do you think? <laughs> Interesting. Mm -hmm. I, um, well, no, I was just thinking because <laughs> I was home when I was getting robbed. Yeah, sure, it was different. <laughs> Yours was like an assault. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was the police were very much right On there. On your side, right, right, right. Um, and able to apprehend the person. Right. But when it came to, like, actually when he went to court and then they were like, well, come and testify against him. But I was like, why do I have to come and testify against someone who I have on video? And it was like this whole chain of like evidence that was just never presented. Oh, wow. So I had to go and like be more diligent about like, I don't want my face and my address and all of this stuff to be out there. Um, so it was like having to kind of like be your own attorney, oh, or, like yeah, your yeah. own advocate. So you're swimming in unknown waters. <clears throat> my yeah, but I do appreciate the cops were there because that could have been very different. Shout out to the blue. Coming up on DBL, we're talking with comedian Tom Papa. What's it like having a wife? who's also a comedian. I bet it's a blast. Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. That's coming up. Then you travel with your family. Oh, that's hell on earth. A family vacation? Don't do that. Don't do that. Look, a family is a bad organization. It barely works at home. Why would you take it on the road? Welcome back. When it comes to new material, Tom Papa has always known that education starts at home. Earlier, we spoke with him about his new tour and the ghost in his house. Take a look. Ooh. Good stuff. Top. <laughs> it's so good to see you. So it's back to school season and your youngest daughter is now starting college. So what are you looking forward to most as a new empty nester? Oh, I don't know. My my wife says that we're not allowed to use the term empty nester because it's too depressing. <laughs> she, so we're calling it our our second newlywed phase. Oh, cute. <gasps> yeah. Nice. So I, so apparently we're going to be going on a lot of dates. Oh, that's fun. Things can get sexy. Uh, speaking of your wife, she's also a comedian, and I've always wondered about the dynamic. How often are you really getting roasted by her? Is it like every night? 
Yes, it's pretty much every night, but it's very subtle. It's very small, very, very little, little jabs. Yeah, yeah <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Micro comedic ag aggressions. <laughs> Man, we just had a whole meeting about microaggression. Right, it's on the mind. I think, I, I think I'm doing one right now, so I'm going to stop. So you, <laughs> we're going to switch gears here, Tom. You mentioned that you have a ghost in your house that what? sometimes appears on camera. No, this is it. <gasps> is he? Is is that ghost still around? It oh is still goodness. around. What? Yeah, that was my that was my little nest camera. I was on the road and I got an alert and I saw You're a lying. shadowy. Yeah, and I called my wife, and there was nobody in the house. There's no one Stop in my it. office. Can we see that picture yes. again? Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's her it looks like he's in a trench coat. He looks Stop. like he has a gun. gun. Does he? Does he have a name? Did you name him? Tom? He kind of looks like the UPS driver. <laughs> oh wait! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't name him. I'm too scared of him. But I think he is around. We oh. we have little we have little moments where uh, someone feels like s s something behind them, or sees like a little something Tom. behind them. Wow. No, yeah. Tom, you, you should some... talk to him. You should ask him what he wants. That's right. Um, he looked like he was delivering a pizza. Maybe he's in purgatory. Maybe he doesn't want yeah. to talk about it. He's in purgatory. You need to help him, Tom. Tom. I don't think I don't think you ask a man in a trench coat <laughs> with a gun what he wants. <laughs> Get some holy water and sprinkle it on or them all. Sage or something. Yeah, like yeah. <laughs> okay, so you're so well known as an upbeat comic. How do you put a positive spin on the on the world while still actually being funny? Well, I think the world is always a, a difficult place. I think it always has been. I think we as a generation have to deal with it in our face, on our phones, giving you constant updates about all of the scary things. So I think you just have to have perspective and you have to realize we're only here for a short time. So why digest all of that and live in fear? You just kind of have to try and block it out as much as you can and get yourself some Doritos and a croissant once in a while and mm, treat yourself yes. well. Mm -hmm. okay. Like the ghost who's living for free in <laughs> yeah. your home, literally. Yes. <laughs> they have a great relationship. They understand what each one wants. He wants to be left alone and Tom, you're on the road, so everything's perfect. <laughs> uh, now, I, I'm sure you saw that Kevin Hart recently filmed a special at his house on a custom made stage. What do you think the pros and cons of doing stand up at home are? And do you have to have a home big enough to build a custom <laughs> stage? Yeah. Is that part of it? Yeah. <laughs> I think Kevin has has two things working in his in his favor there he has probably the biggest house any of us have ever seen so you can fit a stage and he's also very little <laughs> so. Uh, well, uh, you know, Tom, it's weird. My manager has me booked at the Tom Papa Amphitheater. What? Uh, to perform at his, yeah, he's got a stage at his house, too. So. Get no yeah. way. I cannot yeah. believe you guys believe me. Oh, oh my yeah. God. You just have to, you just have, sorry, to put, you have to put your drink on the bicycle seat of the, <laughs> of the Peloton. That's, <laughs> That's yeah. funny. I know. Funny. Good one, Al. Okay. <laughs> DBO Nation, see Tom this summer on tour nationwide. Tickets are selling fast, so grab them at TomPapa.com. Thank you so much, Tom. Tom, always great seeing you. So Congrats on the tour, You man. guys are so beautiful. I, you, uh, this array is just, you guys look so great. I love being here. Thank oh. you, Tom. Oh, we love you. I think love I've you. seen Tom more times than anybody. Oh, good for you. I've seen Tom probably five times. What? Yes. Oh, now Including we're having twice in I've Vegas. I've seen him are dozens we, of times at the Comedy Cellar. Like, I've seen him a hundred. I've, I've seen him a thousand. To infinity and beyond. <laughs> do you regret saying that, Tom? Okay. R-O-F-L. <laughs> R-O-F-L. <laughs> Go.
Welcome back. If you enjoy drinks that might stay in your teeth like red wine, like me, the last thing you might want to worry about is leaving your teeth <laughs> dull and discolored. But now with new Smile Active's Pro Whitening Gel, you can enjoy coffee and foods like blueberries, all with a dazzling white smile. In a clinical study, users saw an improvement of up to eight shades after using the gel for 30 days. Smile Active's is safe and effective and will even work on crowns, bonding, and dentures. Order today for exclusive buy one, get one free offer. Don't wait to get your brighter, whiter smile. Call 1-800-700-4040 or visit smileactives.com today. Um, Lee wrote in about frauds and said there are some skins that absolutely do not look like a scam. That's true, right. especially with AI coming. Um, Jennifer said the scammers are getting high tech. It's getting scary. I feel like one day they might get me. They, unfortunately, probably are going to get all of us. Yes. Everybody I know has been gotten. Stay vigilant, everyone. Got. We'll see you tomorrow. Got, got. Bye, guys. Got, got. Got, got.